another day of clearing up my Google tabs. I like to learn random things and then I can't close my Google tabs because I haven't used anything with that cool information. So here I am using that cool information. Let's learn something. Today we're learning about Vivianite. Oh, I don't have horns. I'm just in front of a skull. Nice effect though. Vivianite, the necro crystal. Also known as a corpse crystal because it grows on corpses. So there's this misconception I'm saying a lot and they think that like Vivianite solely grows on corpses. That's not true. Corpses do help though. And I'll explain. Vivianite on its own when it forms naturally is clear, colorless. But once it touches sunlight and oxidizes, you get these beautiful dark blues to teals to greens and even purples in some cases. Vivianite jewelry is really hard to come by because it is only 1.5 to 2 on the most hardness scale, meaning it is very soft, very brittle. It is not easy to facet like these. So about that whole corpse thing. Vivianite is often found forming on fossilized shells and fossilized skeletal remains. But yes, it can also form on human bodies and has been known to do so. But it's not the corpses that do it, it's the bones. What it is, in order to form Vivianite, you need phosphate, iron, and water. I'm sure there's a couple of other things too. But those are the big three. So a lot of the times when they find human remains with Vivianite growing on them, it is because they are in close proximity to something with iron. Vivianite is actually a really handy tool for archaeologists and forensic researchers because it gives a much clearer idea of what happened to the body after they have stopped living. In 1998, they found like one or more blue-tinged skeletons in Vietnam, and they were able to research it and found that they were in fact covered in Vivianite. By doing that, they were able to tell that they were buried in a waterlogged environment and that they were buried next to their aircraft. The iron of the aircraft, their decaying bodies, the water, Vivianite. In the 1960s, they found some bodies in Lake Walken, Germany, and they were partially blue. So they went and looked closer and found that between the bones and the fatty soapy layer that had come to form over their bodies was blue Vivianite. By looking at it closer, they realized that one of the bodies had an iron plate in his head. Decomposing bones, water, iron plate, Vivianite. Vivianite is shown to slow the rate of decay in bones and skeletons. So it's really helpful in sort of improving the archeological value of remains. Well, sidebar here, me and my best friend, Danielle, we, do, we used to do a podcast. We're hoping to kick that back up. It was called Zombie Fishbowl, but we covered mummies a lot. And Otzi the Iceman, who has come up more than a few times in our conversations, he had Vivianite growing on him, which makes me really happy. I wish I had known what Vivianite was then. And I wish I had known that fact when we did that episode. Also, it used to be used in paints because of course it was. There's a painting called The Procurus by a Dutch artist, Johan Vermeer from 1656. And Vivianite paint was used in the carpet, the blue gray parts of the carpet. They called that paint blue ochre and it was a lot less expensive to use than lapis. Vivianite is still sold as a paint pigment today. Fun fact. Are you wondering about the metaphysical properties of it because you're witchy like me? A lot of people say that Vivianite is used to boost the immune system and relieve stress. So there's that. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. Comes from bodies, heals the body, I guess. Oh, fun thing. It's also found on iron coffins and bodies of people in those iron coffins. Because why? The iron. I want to be buried in an iron coffin. That's so neat. I'm sure it's not good for the environment though. So yeah, Vivianite, corpse crystals. Love it. I love your face.